Welcome everybody to the NXT TakeOver Toronto 2 review video. I'm your host, the Rated R reviewer, Stefan Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good evening, wrestling fans. And today, we'll get to you, Noah. I want to introduce first, for the very first time reviewing NXT with us, we've got Virtue. How's it going, Virtue? What's up, guys? I can't wait to do this. And you know what? I am going to tell you my thoughts on NXT TakeOver Toronto, not what Aaron Riff told you that I said. <laughs> oh. So this is going to be fun. Take it away. And long-standing member of the NXT team, we've got the simple man, Noah Foster. Of course, we were all there live. We all sat together. We all saw the show together. And wow. And wow. Damn. Um... Normally, I give, you know, just a little bit of a recap of the show in general, but that is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. this show starts off with the Tag Team Championship match, and if you think, of course, Jerry knew that. <laughs> the General's Order prevailed tonight. We had the Tag Team match. We had the Showcase, showcase match. match between Io Shirai and Candice LeRae. Then we had the Triple Threat for the North American Championship the Women's Championship, and then the NXT Championship. That is the General's Order, and again... It prevailed. Yep, but we didn't need a tiebreaker for the NXT team, because Jerry got five out of five. Congratulations. Congratulations. It, it, it took me 12-hour drive all the way up to fucking Canada, but I nailed it. You perfect takeover. Yep. So we've got the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford versus the Undisputed Era, specifically Red Dragon. We've got Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. And we figured this was going to be one of those matches potentially stealing the show because of these two teams. And I don't know if it stole the show, but it absolutely delivered. Yeah, it, it, start, it started off. It started to show off beautifully. So, Virtue, as our brand new guest, I'm going to let you go first on this opening match. I wanted Undisputed Era to win. Nothing against the Street Profits. They did well in this match. But they're dangling them on the main roster on Raw, so I just might as well let them skip NXT and go back to the main roster. I thought tonight should have been Undisputed Era winning everything. Yeah. We'll get to that later. That's still okay. Great match. You were keen on the Red Solo Cup thing. I had no clue what that meant. <laughs> boy, a lot of people had Red Solo Cups, so that was pretty cool. Uh, or um, for a match, like the crowd, they, they came out and just piled out and just gave the crowd the Red yeah. Solo Cups. And I think somebody forgot to do it before the match because they were hustling. Yeah. They were like, oh, crap, we got to get all these cups handed out to people. Yep. It was a great hot opener, though. I mean, that's what they're supposed to be. You, that NXT crowd is easy to manipulate, and all you have to do is go out there and have a match like this and the people are ready to roll that show. Yeah. However, we'll talk about it later. One thing didn't go over so well. Yeah. To be continued, so next, who wants to go? Uh, no. no, your thoughts. This tag match, like I said, it was the hot opener. I thought they were gonna go against the general order, the conventional format of the tag team match being your opener. They did not, and as Virtue put it, you see what I'm wearing. I thought this was the night Undisputed Era would be draped in gold. Yes. Damn it, didn't happen. And here I thought Street Profits was just going to be rolled into Raw because they've been used as crime time, not to promote and sell stuff, but to promote actual W superstars and main roster shells. And still, matches. Yes, and matches. And still, though, this was a hot take, to say the least. All the great hot spots here, including Montez Ford and his incredible hops, and the Street Profits retained. Yeah, everything you expect out of Montez Ford, we got. Oh, yeah. We got a little bit of comedy. We got that sick frog splash. You get so much air on that frog he, splash. He dove over the top rope. Yep. He channeled the, the outside. rock. Yeah, he channeled the rock. <laughs> That's he right. The That's rock. right. He Dude, as soon as he hit that spine buster and he got up and he had that he had that rock step. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I nudged there and I was like, that was like a rock spine buster. And then he's setting up the people's elbow. Yeah. Setting up the people's elbow. He doesn't yeah. hit it, but he <laughs> does hit a rock bottom. And soon after the crowd starts chanting, rock, gee, rock, rock gee, yep. rock. Oh, that was fun. great. <laughs> this match was fun from top to bottom. I don't know if it was like a five-star match or anything like that. But it was a good kickoff for a takeover. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it, it delivered every bit as much as you would assume a takeover match would deliver. But it also set kind of set a bad tone for the undisputed error for that for that. <laughs> yeah, year. no kidding. So ah, yeah, geez. street well, profits. Kind of sorta, you know what I mean. Kind of. Oh, sorta. oh, the, se the second the second the pinfall happened, Noah, his dreams were just yeah. crushed. His, he was so <laughs> dejected looking. 
Don't remind me. But <laughs> Street Profits oh. won in a very good match. Uh, they won clean. Not that they wouldn't, but there was a little bit of time where we saw the Street Profits kind of edging on being heels. Yeah. But then I think the War Raiders got called up and they're like, oh, we need you to be baby faces now. So yeah. forget all that. Which happens from time uh, to time. What, what's, what's their name this week? Is it still the Vikings? or Because I don't watch the main drive. They are the, the Viking, Viking Raiders. Raiders. So Viking Raiders, that's right. They combine the two. Yeah. So after this, as we said, we get the showcase match of the night. Io Shirai in a blood feud with Candice LeRae. And kind of short blood feud, but she did suplex her onto a chair. You know, risk breaking her neck. I'd say it's pretty good. <laughs> She and this match, the table to her too. this match was my least favorite match going into the idea of watching it. Oh yeah, like I, I wasn't expecting much out of it. I would have much preferred to see either the finals of the breakout tournament, or at the very least, uh, Matt Riddle versus, versus Jillian, Jillian Dane. Dane. This match, however, delivered absolutely way above the bar I set <laughs> for it. It was great. This was a great match. If there was a, this was probably a better women's match than the women's championship match that we got. I, I, I would actually agree with that. Sorry, statement. Big G, but he's right. The the crowd was so cool for the women's championship match, but they were hot as fuck for this match. Oh yeah. Io Shirai looked great. Candice LeRae took a lot of a beating for most of the beginning of this match. She came back. She had her baby face spots. She got a lot of wicked moves in. Yeah, just shit. You'd see Johnny Gargano. She she hit a uh, reverse Rana, an yep. inverted Rana that rivals the one Johnny Gargano hit later. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just a, they used to wrestle each other in the Indies. AIW, yep. Yep. Candace wrestling. Yep, beautiful match. And uh, why don't you go with it, Jerry, and let us know who won. Let, let me let me inform you guys on this first. This is going to be my least favorite match because, yet. Yeah, I didn't like the idea of Io Shirai and Candice LeRae not having a match that wasn't a street fight since they were so vicious. I think it should have been, I initially was thinking, this isn't takeover worthy. It needs to be the first match we get, main event, full sale, street fight, for like on the main event. That made a little more sense to me, and Killian Dane and Matt Riddle should have been on the card. Mm -hmm. They totally proved me wrong. Yeah. I went out there, <laughs> yeah. got my collector's cup, and I missed the Yo Shirai um, entrance, which, like, she was fully channeling Kenta in this match. Yep. Yellow and black tights. She went for a GTS. She... I thought she was going to hit one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, even just just her mannerisms and her the red streak she had in her hair, also a nod to, to Kenta. And... She, she had that viciousness to her, and it was just such a beautifully crafted match, and it was intense, it wasn't super violent, but, and you got to see Candace, you got to see Candace, you know, pull her spots actually, but you got to still see Io Shirai earn her name as the um, genius of the sky at the same time. Yeah, there were a couple of high spots that Io just, there was one in particular, I don't even remember what it was, but she did something I'd just never seen before, I think it was to escape a move, but... Yeah. Anyway, your thoughts, Noah? I said this was proposedly going to be my sleeper of the night. Boy, was I was right. <laughs> that was an amazing match. We've all this time been thinking of Candace as just Johnny Gargano's wife. No, she literally could be Miss Terry Gore matches like this. That was an incredible showing. I also like the idea how it seems like a heel in WWE goes black and green, not yellow, when it comes to turning heel. You would think, though, that... This would be more applied to, oh, I don't know, someone else in the main roster. But anyway, not talking about that. This match was on all fronts, and they put out all their finishers to the point Io Shirai gave us a brand new move that was like an interesting dual submission lock around Candice LeRae's neck. And oh, she won as I fought. Yeah. That was an incredible match, and what a finish. And I really do hope these two fight each other again. Yep. Virtue. Now, Jerry, you mentioned the Kenta, uh, Hideo Tommy like vibe yes. that she had. Respect me. I actually said that before I said that, though. You know what I mean? I, you and yeah. I talk. Before I said that, Io Shirai does Becky Lynch's The Man gimmick with the red hair, the, the gear, which I don't like Becky's gear, better than Becky Lynch. So now not only does Tessa Blanchard do a better Becky Lynch gimmick, Io Shirai does. Becky Lynch, <laughs> <laughs> Becky Lynch are great and all, but... 
I'd like to see some more character development like these other people are doing. Yeah. So it was awesome. And I think now Io Shirai is ready to get pushed towards a title picture, I think. Yeah. I, I think that's what it really took was the vicious side of her to be pushed out this way. Plus, we got the new finisher, Candice LeRae, completely passed out there. It looks like a triangle choke, mm -hmm. almost mixed with a... Uh, God, I, I'm not the even arm sure. Armbar, arm bar, kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah. Just to wrap the arm around her she, neck. She, it, was like, it was like she made her choke herself out, plus a triangle choke at the same time. And she even said at the end of the match, just stay asleep. Just go back to sleep. sleep. Or just go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Respect me. I respect Eel after this. This was long overdue. I've been waiting for it to turn here. I was waiting to see, like, Heath carry from back in Lucha Underground. That was shades of that tonight. Surprises you didn't use, like, a destroyer to win, but something totally different. Hence how dynamic her character is. I really do hope now they push her to the moon. Yep. And when you change gimmicks and characters, do gear, do hair, have a completely different vibe about you. You usually don't see that. Io Shirai, to me, is pulling it off. Uh, and that, entrance included. I, I was actually surprised not to see her in solid black because she had been showing it, showcasing it so much on the NXT. But the yellow added into it just channeled more of Kenta, yep. more of that intensity. Loved it. Yeah, lime green. Fucking loved it. Yeah, this match was essentially perfectly crafted. Yeah. Yep. Because the storyline going in made it, as I said, a blood feud, which means... The beginning part of the match, when you normally see a lot of slow moves, a lot of uh, ground holds and things like that, just to get some time in before you start killing yourself with these high spots, yeah. was mostly Io Shirai and Candice LeRae going at it like two pissed off bitches. They yes. went at it before the bell even. Candice LeRae came out and immediately went after Io. So there wasn't a lot of downtime. No. Uh, <laughs> probably the longest hold there was was at the end of the match. Yeah. And the rest of the match was sculpted beautifully, and I wish, honestly, this was the main event. Because I probably would rate this better than the two out of three falls match. Ooh, wow. wow. Interesting. All right, stay tuned. See a cliffhanger. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Don't, don't fast forward to the end of the video either. You gotta oh, no, no, no. Why? No, no. Because what happened next? What happened next? Uh, the Mountie. Well, first off, no. we were supposed Bro. to get... Right. Yeah, they, they came on the screen with the uh, the video package for the triple threat match for the North American Championship. But... but before we could get an entrance through the crowd on a microphone comes Matt Riddle. Bro. Bro. He doesn't get music. He doesn't have his gear on. He comes into the, the ring with his flip-flops, which essentially are his gear. But There's blue an entrance jeans, gear. Blue jeans and t-shirt. He was dressed for a fight, literally. Yeah. And a fight is what he called for. He wants Killian Dane. He said, we're at TakeOver. I know he's here. Yeah. Let's do this. And yeah. Killian Dane came out. Yep. Yeah. But this match was not a match. No. There was nothing <laughs> sanctioned about this. And there was a lot of pissed off guys in black that are obviously local Toronto wrestling talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They wanted to stop them from fighting, but the crowd wanted them to let them fight. So what do you do? Destroy them all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt Riddle hit a bunch of cool moves, like some of his moves, and then kill on four of them. And then Killian and Dane on his GTS. four just started raining down forearms, clubbing forearms, and knocking everybody down. <laughs> And, but after each of them does that, the other one is the one that takes advantage and gets the move. It was fun. They, they fought They fought security off as much as they fought each other. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only person's not hit in this few were the referees because everything was thrown here. Forearms, the divide, Matt Riddle with the knee strikes, and then you saw how this ended. Mm -hmm. Now, Virtue, you said you watched NXT occasionally. Did you get to see the spot where Killian Dane... Did the sent the? It's like a sideways sent on divide. I've seen all the stuff he's through done with the Matt. stage. I, I've seen well. I've seen everything he's done with Matt Riddle since they started this. This is a perfect example. If you don't know what to do with somebody on the main roster, you send them back down to NXT because Killing Dane has new life with this feud with Matt Riddle. Oh, absolutely. And Matt Riddle's intensity. Look, I didn't like him in the Indies. Something about him being an NXT. Maybe it's the way he does his entrance, the character, the cockiness. NXT sells me on superstars, but that's only if Vince McMahon ends up seeing their star power down the road, right? And we're going to talk about that with the next match. Matt Riddle, to me, is a Brock Lesnar opponent for the future, and everybody hates Brock Lesnar, so 
Most people that I know like Matt Riddle, but if they don't, you tell me they would choose Lesnar over Riddle in a future main event roster match. So with that <laughs> said, they're going to keep him in NXT a little bit longer. I'd like to think that we're going to see Riddle tomorrow SummerSlam, but he's got some unfinished business of killing Dane. Well, the yes. truth is Riddle is ready. Um, yeah, we, we we understand exactly what you're talking about because when, when he came into it. NXT, we hated him. Yep. We didn't like him in the ring. We didn't like him in his promos. He was too much of a stupid idiot surfer bro. And then yeah. he had that match with Velveteen Dream. Right? And he then he, it, no, that no, was no, the beginning. Was, it was even before that. Uh, uh, back, yeah, yeah, it was a five pack challenge. Oh, right? that's and what it was. Five challenge, yeah. Dude, he when I watch a match of his, maybe he works stiff. It's believable. I don't think that it's kicking out of fake finishes, this and that. I feel like it's a fight. It's yeah. a real match. I mean, the barefoots, the MMA thing. But Matt Riddle, two thumbs up by me. He turned and it up with Roderick Strong as he took over 25, too. So I mentioned the cross senton spot through the uh, stage on NXT television. The way we ended this was with a double table spot off the stage with Matt Riddle hanging on Killian Dane's back trying to uh, put him to sleep. And Killian Dane just grabs up a random security guy and takes him, <laughs> and down takes with, him with him. All <laughs> three go guy. through the table, but you've got Riddle on uh, Killian Dane's back. So, of course, Killian gets up first. He did deliver the move. Yeah. yeah. So, and Matt Riddle, totally fair. keep tormenting the legends in Goldberg because you are an up-and-comer. If you don't harass them behind the state, behind the scenes, right, that's where the disrespect is. Yeah. But for people that think Matt Riddle's being disrespectful to the legends like Booker T., and Goldberg, he's doing it in gimmick, which is his normal on camera, right? Yes. Wrestler, they know they work each other. Yeah. Chris Jericho, he's fighting back with them on Twitter just in case they work for the same company one day and there could be future business. Wrestlers know what they're doing, okay, people? And let Matt Riddle continue to do this. He's not being punished. I, I, if he I, was I, being I, punished, I, he wouldn't have had this big spot. Oh, yeah, I don't. I would be happy if he shows up at SummerSlam, if Goldberg squashes Dolph Ziggler, stands at the top of the ramp, and just applauds, like, like very mockingly, and just yep. goes, you know, wow. Boom, there's your Survivor Series match. Yep. 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 So not bad for not a match. Yeah, great angle. Right. Better than the Seth Rollins angle back at NXT TakeOver San Antonio, where he was trying to take over to get Triple H to come out and fight. Yeah. Support, no DQ. We are on to the Triple Threat match for the North American Championship, we've got Velveteen Dream defending against Roderick Strong and... The Bruiserweight. Pete Dunne. Yes. <laughs> and this was a match that I assumed was, was going to steal the show. Yeah. And almost did. It was a really good, really good match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think somebody mentioned it. It might have been Virtue that they didn't spend a lot of time with uh, one guy down playing possum a lot. I hate that. There was only a couple times I remember Dream rolling outside of the ring, but he was quickly back in the mix. Most Triple H, or Triple H's, most (laughs) Triple Threats that I watch, you have a guy playing possum or a girl and just two people going at it, and then they just alternate as to rest somebody. This match nailed what a Triple Threat should be. Damn right. It wasn't quite uh, TNA Impact when they had the X Division, where every Smoke title, well, where every title defense was a triple threat match, and so they learned to do a lot of spots where one guy hits two different moves on both opponents, mm-hmm. or one guy hits one move on one opponent who hits a move on the other opponent, like mm-hmm. things like that. I think that pioneered a lot of triple threat wrestling. This was more like them trading moves, but instead of back and forth, they're trading it amongst the three of them. Yep. Yes. And then somehow they're all down. Yep. A lot of that, but seamlessly and very entertaining. And I don't know if it was great, but it was really, really good. May I? Go yeah. ahead. It did, now, triple threat's a gimmick, okay? Yes. Just adds an extra person to the match. With that said, this was the best match of the night, in my opinion. Now, that's not saying that the main event wasn't great, but... I don't need all those gimmicks like that. And I know that Cole and Gargano needed that because they wrestled before, okay? Yeah, But twice. Th- this yeah, match, twice. I mean, you had Pete Dunne, right? Roderick Strong is really, really good. I mean, he, he might be just as good as Adam Cole, but he doesn't have the flash. He's, he's mm-hmm. just a wrestler. He's, he's a wrestler, you know, a tough he's guy. He's very meat and potatoes. So, and then, of course, of course, Velveteen Dream, you had the Mountie gimmick. And the Toronto Raptors, who won the NBA championship. This guy is the next, potentially, and all depends on what Vince McMahon does, Rock. 
Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan. I know he's not that big in terms of size, but he makes up for it with his charisma. I have never, I have never seen yeah. a guy that's ready for a main event spot. And and I know people, Aaron and I were talking, right? There were empty. It didn't sell out for Takeover. Right? Correct. But Definitely. also, Velveteen Dream is not being promoted as the main eventer either. True. Who's to say that he wasn't in the main event match against Gargano and Cole if those extra couple thousand seats would have sold? This guy has it. This match proved it. Dude, and somebody who pointed out that he had the Owen Hart high energy suspenders. I, I, I'm just going to keep rambling on how great Velveteen Dream is. This was my favorite match of the night. Take it. Okay. Well, naturally, I was already I was already thinking Velveteen Dream was going to win because I figured they're going to be Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong would be too focused on showing who's more deserving of being champion and forgetting Velveteen Dream was even in the match. And I think Velveteen Dream actually played up on that a lot too with the whole him falling out of the ring more than anybody else. He was able to catch his breath here and there and let Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne beat the hell out of each other. But I'm going to say this right now, Roderick Strong stole this match. Like, uh, delivering the backbreakers on the outside of the ring. Off the, the rip, this was in the first, like, minute of the match. Yeah, yeah. and, like, um, him just, like, delivering forearms, cutting across. The forever the forearms. Yes. Well, he hits, like, three backbreakers, but then the fourth backbreaker was a double backbreaker, and by that I mean he delivers a backbreaker on the one guy across the other guy's back. Yeah. While he's leaning on the apron. <laughs> and I can appreciate you saying you stole the show from... From that point of view, I get it. Uh, I'm a sports entertainment guy. That's why I lean towards all. Well, I, I, think but I'm not gonna... I think he stole the match. I didn't yeah. say he stole the show. Oh, well, this is the best match of the show. So if oh, you said yeah. that, then I'll say he stole the show. But oh, I'm not going to argue with that. It was a combination of wrestlers and sports entertainment, like Richie says. But Valentine Dream is sports entertainment, waiting to be the main roster's next top guy. And this match was really, like you said, Jerry, it really came down to two wrestlers trying to prove who was the better wrestler. Because in the end, Valentine Dream took advantage of where you fought Roderick Strong had the win, and he pinned Pete Dunne. Yes. I did not see that coming. Here's my explanation. Okay, besides the fact that I was going to be draped in gold, I thought it was really going to come down to Roderick Strong of Velveteen Dream, eliminating Pete John Dunn, because I figured Pete Dunn was the biggest threat, being the former longest reigning NXT UK champion. I figured he was going to go after the same for the North American title. So, of course, you have the Heat first with Strong and Dream, who already had a singles match, with Strong having a victory over the Dream. So you eliminate Dunn, and there were some strange up bedfellow alliances, as you said, Virtue, throughout this, including that. But apparently, I was wrong, and wow, I can only imagine what this means now for Pete Dunn more than Strong, because Pete Dunn ate the fall. Well, if AEW ever becomes a, like a huge, huge threat to Vince McMahon, he needs to have his finger on the detonator button, and out from the missile silo comes Velveteen Dream said it before, and I'm going to continue to say that. And I have to agree with you at this point, because right now, Velveteen Dream is literally NXT's best thing. Well, coming off the last two weeks of NXT television, I knew Pete Dunne was taking the fall in this match. Yeah. He was getting pinned, because he looked awesome two weeks ago on NXT TV, yeah. NXT TV at the end of the show. As far as Velveteen Dream and Roderick Strong, Roderick Strong really was the guy that did the final finishing move yep. that won the match. Yep. It's just Velveteen Dream came in and stole it. And then the hard end Shawn Michaels. That, that, and then you know Shawn works with these guys. That's yeah. awesome. So Roderick Strong is a member of the Undisputed Era attempting to get all four of them with titles. And this continues his hunt for the North American Championship because he didn't get pinned. And technically he won the match for Velveteen Dream. Absolutely, and he could say that, because like, if it wasn't for me, you probably wouldn't be North American champion, because they're right. This Ruffle, Raymaker, Elbow Drop, After, End of Heartache. I think the triple threat stipulation was just a hot entrance back into NXT for Pete Dunne. Yeah, yeah. But he got the loss, but he still had a lot of momentum going in, so he doesn't lose too much. And we continue on with, hopefully, Roderick Strong trying to get the gold, and maybe... Maybe we finally see the Undisputed Era, all four of them with titles, or maybe we see this is the storyline that breaks them apart. A lot of different dynamics that could go here. It also makes you wonder, now Pete Dunne looks more human, more vulnerable, more beatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You guys remember that Tough Enough episode where Chris Jericho was talking to Patrick Clark and said, I think you have something to be in this business? Yes. Wow. Just yeah. absolutely wow. 
So our fourth match of the night is the women's championship. We've got Shayna Baszler defending against Mia Yim, uh. who uh, comes out with uh, a, like a WrestleMania quality entrance where you've got a bunch of people, people. dressed like Mia Yim. It was a posse. She was a bust, um, what's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Uh, uh, what, are, what are the bad guys in that? Oh, oh foot, 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 foot soldiers. Yeah. So a bunch of foot soldiers came out, and then she came out through them, and then just, it was normal from that point. Yeah. Uh, Shayna Baszler comes out, and this was probably the hottest the crowd was to see her come out. And then it just cooled off from there. This is ending the second hour of the actual pay-per-view, but we had already been there for nearly four. Yeah. And the, uh, the pre-show, or the dark matches didn't start till 30 minutes prior. I was getting pretty tired as well. I think I was watching it with my head planted in in my uh, fist. But uh, I think they do that on purpose. I think Shanna Baszler. Should I just say that now? Yeah, go for it. I think Shanna Baszler is sorry, Big G. I think she's the NXT Women's Champion right now because she's being used as the cooler to every NXT main event. Nothing against her. But we know she's a ground and pound MMA style wrestler. Matt right? wrestling. And there's very unless she's working with like one of the Japanese girls or a high flyer. Yes. Mia Yim's not any of those really. Yeah. And it, I might agree with you that Shayna Baszler is used as a cooler, except for the fact that this is the first not so entertaining match that I've seen out of Shayna Baszler like ever. I've kind of have. I think seen a trend though, and maybe it's her opponent she's working with. I think it was I, Mia Yim. But in this case, I, she was I, carrying Mia Yim. You could clearly see that. We already know how Mia Yim has changed her. The problem, is, the problem is that Shayna Baszler is a heel, and there's only so much carrying that a heel can do mm -hmm. because their job is not to have high spots that entertain the crowd and make them go wow and make them clap and cheer you. Their their job is to get booed. Mm -hmm. So they do all the boring stuff, and if Mia Yim isn't pulling off the entertaining stuff, then. That's on her, not Shayna Baszler. Yeah. I think the reason the title is on Shayna Baszler is because there is nobody in the women's division in NXT that holds a candle to her. And Io Shirai, we just put her praises up. But, but now she's a heel. You can't put her against her for the I title. I mean, you again. could. NXT could try and reinvent oh. that idea. Yeah. Yeah. You Shirai do, Baszler you do, 3. You could do Candace sneaking away the victory, and then she loses it pretty quickly. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't want to see Io Shirai versus Baszler 3. Maybe here's the problem with Candace Baszler, doesn't. right? She's she's very good at what she does. Yes. Her style is a main is a main roster style. Oh, right? yeah. Her mixing it up with the Becky Lynch's and, and maybe the Ronda Rousey's and Charlotte Flair's. For NXT, not so much. And I think people, NXT fans like to keep seeing the next person. She's held that title for a long time, lost it, won it back, right? Yes. Is that true? Yes. So I think that NXT fans get bored with their ground and pound style, and I think WWE knows that, and that's why there always has to be a cooler match. Every NXT match, everyone's popping, right? Except mo for most of the time, Shayna Baszler matches. I've even heard some bad things about her matches against some of the, you know, when she fought. Um, Who's uh, Oscar's partner? Um, Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane. Not that the, but I'm just saying, I, I just think it's the style. I think, nothing against Shayna, I just think it's the style of her match and her MMA background and NXT fans like the spot matches and her matches typically don't have that. So let me ask you this, uh, Brock Lesnar, we know he's not sports entertainment, he's like a straight up fighter too and his style is pretty simple, it's just suplexes that fire. Shayna Baszler you could say is stomp arm, uh, knee strike. Submission. Would you consider Shayna Baszler possibly being a female version of Brock Lesnar? Possibly. I mean, the thing is with Brock, if he needs to turn on the charisma, he can. He's proven it. Look at that UFC promo he did several years ago. Look at the boombox. Brock yeah. Lesnar started as a sports entertainer yeah. and then became an MMA fighter and then came back. True. But Shayna always Baszler was an MMA fighter that transitioned into sports entertainment. I think a lot of it is she's just been dominant, and fans like to see change of champions, right? And who's really been the chaser? They have a chaser after chaser after chaser. I, who's the guy, the girl with the big whip hair? So I think yeah, no, 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 no. so many people have had an opportunity at it, and nobody's been able to beat her. I think that's the problem. So well, maybe the reason that it's boring, or at the very least, just not as entertaining, is because you already know Shayna Baszler is winning. That's a good point. So there's yeah. there's no tense moments in the match because. If it looks like Mia Yim's going to get the pinfall, she's probably not. 
Well, she did pull out her two known finishers, which are uh, Eat the Feet, uh, you know, uh, Showcase yeah. Abigail Kim, protect and uh, Protect Your Neck. So that right there kind of told me, okay, she ended up winning. But also beyond that, you really don't have anyone truly credible to take the title from Shayna. I thought personally her next challenge is going to be Candice LeRae. Where does Candice go from here? Then again, if Candice becomes the next Johnny Gargano at TakeOvers after that incredible women's showcase tonight, she could go for a title shot. Good point. Okay, so my take, on, my, 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 yeah. my take on this <laughs> match. Um, one, of the one of the first episodes of NXT, um, or what's NXT that we did with the cold opens, we joked about Mia Yim like taking the title off Shayna Baszler because that that was like one one of the matches and we just chuckled and yeah, said we, we said no. laughed. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Oh, and we laughed. <laughs> she beat her by the way in AIW in Cleveland once. Yeah. I saw that match too because again these two I are not there. strangers to each other. Lucky these two are not strangers to each other. They literally live yeah. in the same place and they laugh at people who insult them on Twitter. I mean, yeah, for lack of a better term, Shayna Baszler's kind of a rookie, though. You know, she, she she's been in it for a few years, but she's still kind of green. Mia Yim's had all these years of experience out in an indie league. It makes more sense for Mia Yim to win back then. Yeah. And now Shayna Baszler has gotten really fucking good. She yeah. owns NXT Women's Division, yeah. whether you like it or not. I mean, she's not Asuka, per se, and I don't think she's going to go like 500 days. But right now, nobody can touch her. I think if there was somebody that could have dethroned Asuka, it would have been her. Final thoughts, Jerry? I know you were just kind of in the middle of talking to praises. But, or like, or ba lack of ba on that match. Basically, yeah. I couldn't really get into this match because I knew Shayna Baszler was going to win. There you go. That's, there is outcome. Outcome. that's a common denominator. The, 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 Obvious that's, outcome? Like, I, I, I couldn't say I hated the match. Right. But at the same time, there was never this moment where I was sitting on the edge of my seat saying, it's like, oh, Mia Yim's got her now. Yeah, you right. Know? It's like, uh, it's like oh. you had so many near falls that match prior with, like, you know, in the triple threat match that, yeah, this match completely cooled everything. By all accounts, I, I was ready to go get a refill on my drink, in this match, <laughs> sometimes, which is so something I bad. never do. That's for not a bad over. thing sometimes because... Talk about the main event now. And yep, the main I, I event. Now let's get to this. So apparently we are on to the main event. And in this case, we get three main events. We get three oh different God. falls. First is no stipulation, just a regular match. Second Impressive. one is a street fight. And the third one is unknown. Now this would be the best time to uh, spoil our spoiler. Yes. We get to the arena and it's kind of dark, but we start looking up. You know, just to see. And sure enough, above the ring, up within the lights, is this, like, carpeted off, or this blanketed off... Yeah. Square! Black square. <laughs> <laughs> if you kind of, like, suspiciously... This you could see the bottom of the cage. Yeah, it looks it was a cage. the size of a steel cage. And so at this point, we all figured that I won the uh, tiebreaker, just in case it was needed, so I called for a cage. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure at home they uh, made sure that, you know, people watching the network didn't see that thing suspended up from the ceiling. But we knew. We knew what the third yeah. fall was going to be. We knew that there's no way that they're going to put this fucking cage together and raise it up and take the, uh, the measures to try to hide it and not use it. So we know there's going to be a third fall as well. Yeah. Because even Jerry had uh, just joked that, what if somebody wins two falls in a row and we don't even get a stipulation for the third fall? Yeah. That's a problem with triple threat, or not triple threats, best out of three falls. Aaron said this. You almost expect the three falls. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But not always with two separate pinfalls, one for each opponent. In this case, we got a disqualification onto Johnny Gargano to end the first pinfall. Because Cole brings in a chair, the ref takes it, goes to throw it out, and Cole takes that opportunity to kick Gargano straight in the yam bag. <laughs> and he goes for the cover and doesn't get it. Johnny we get a kicks out of a ball shot. I can't. I, 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 really? You can't sell a dreaded low blow? Usually low blow, bam, that's an immediate decision. So, he fought off immediately, too. But yeah, no Stefan, the psychology of what Johnny did, that, I like that. Go ahead. Yeah, that's my Yeah, that's so Cole uh, goes and gets the chair again. 
and he brings it into the ring and the ref's again like you can't use that and he's like fine so he throws it in the corner and goes to work on Johnny Gargano who uh, reverses and he ends up in control and because he just suffered a ball shot I'm assuming he gets the chair and he puts it right across Cole's back and DQ. So Cole gets the first fall, but not because he actually beat Gargano. Gargano beat himself. He played him. Well, and I think Gargano, maybe he was mad about the nut shot, but I think he did it on purpose because he piggybacked that into the complete domination of that second fall, the street fight. Yeah. Well, he hits him with the chair several more times, but that's before the bell rings for the second fall, even. Yeah. Um,. We Set, get a good minute the before the cross, second fall. Sets set, set the chair up, sits cross leg, and just gives Cole this look. It's like it's like next match is a street fight. It's like and, and Don Don Cole. He's like, oh, oh shit, shoot. it is. <laughs> and he tries to get the hell out of there. And this was your typical street fight with Johnny Gargano anymore. Like, and they went into the crowd. They went through down in front of us, back to the ring. Um, they pulled out tables because the crowd was ch chanting for tables right but the only table they ended up using was the announcer's table because uh we got a back body drop to cole through the spanish announce table poor spanish announcer and no one got up and said this is awesome i did yeah. <laughs> a lot, well a lot of people did actually but there at the end of the fall when johnny gargano gets the uh it was the gargano escape right and cole yeah. taps out yep uh the, the, there's three chairs in the ring that really haven't been used. There's two tables in the ring that really ha that haven't even been touched once they got thrown in. And so here comes the cage. So I'm like, okay, they're going to trap all these things in the ring. Cool. So we're going to get to see them used later. And what the hell was that? That is just about the next thought. Yeah. Because oh my god, it doesn't take but a few seconds after they started lowering the cage that you notice it's not your regular cage. It is littered, littered with weapons. A whole lot of kendo sticks that didn't get used. No. We had a no, sledgehammer. Yeah. We had a, 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 a fire, fire extinguisher. You had a chair. You had a bag of goodies. Broomsticks. You had a ladder. Just. On, lay, laying on the corner. Some sort of board at the corner. top in the corner, and the entire thing was surrounded by wire. I thought it was back in JBL versus Big Show back at that match, and I was like, oh, they're going to do some of one's going to go for the ring, right? Because, And then as soon as it lowers, they set it in place, both men see it. What does the announcer say? There is no escape. The only way to win is by pinfall or submission. And Cole's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. This this cage looked pretty badass. G Gargano was looking at it like he was in Candyland. <laughs> He's like, over like, he was like, what the hell? And then he looked around like, I could use this. Yeah. Let me ask you guys this though, with the cage match, right? And there was no um, DQ or anything. Plus, Adam Cole's a champion anyway. Why wouldn't his buddies come out there to help him? Um, uh, prove a point. Th their power levels only on three or four percent because they all got defeated. <laughs> yeah, right, well, that's how it works. Maybe make Adam Cole seem credible, or maybe Adam Cole personally told them like, because we don't see like the backstage from. Well, I actually, did you know he didn't come out and help them win their title matches? Why should no, they come out and help him retain? I don't know. I, 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 you know, it's one of those weird things when you figure about he is the leader, he's a heel. You forget the heels look out for each other, but because it wasn't in the script. Yeah, basically. Yes. <laughs> or you had Walter and Tyler Bates, you know, promoting NXT UK out in the crowd. In the audience. I was talking to Jerry about this. Wouldn't that have been cool when the cage was lowered? They came in. I don't know if there was a door on the cage or they climbed over the top. They beat, beat both the guys down. Just kind of made a statement for UK. Yes. And then they walked out, and then the two guys could recover from that and then still do the finish where their interference didn't affect it. It'd be like a other. Shades of a brand invasion I just for the next want takeover. Some, just, a little, just a little bit of effort. Even I if, like you know Jerry's I mean? idea for the end of the show where all of Undisputed Era actually wins their titles. And they're yes. all draped in gold and they all go to the four corners of the cage and meanwhile Imperium's music starts. Yes. Oh, that would And been they sweet. come out. And Boom. now you've got four versus four, and this is going to set up for, what is it, November and War Games? Yes. Instead of having uh, thrown-together teams on NXT, you actually have a four-man group and a four-man group with 
natural war games. See, that's what also coincides with the Worlds Collide events, where they've done NXT versus NXT UK, and predominantly NXT has won all those matches. You talk about who's the best brand, where's the competition, NXT and NXT UK, they might as well go head to head. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Undisputed Era should have all the titles. That would be cool. Yes! So I the, might have pushed for that a long time ago on a panel video. I wanted to have all the Undisputed Eras to win at a pay-per-view, and it's, it's still never happened. Like, as soon as I saw Undisputed Era go to four people, I was like, this is the faction I want to see. I want to see Evolution recreate. I, again, Triple H, Shawn Michaels lead in NXT. You're telling me Undisputed Era can't be Evolution in 2019, winning all the gold? Their leader has the top title as it is. You might as well call Adam Cole the next Triple H. I mean, uh, that's a that's a little far reaching. Yeah, so, maybe light. Triple H light. Yeah, exactly. Triple H light. Yeah, exactly. He's my yeah. L I T E. Yes. So the finish of this match comes where they both go up to the corner with oh the aforementioned gosh. board. It looks like a table is strapped to the corner, much like the uh, ladder was uh, laying across, mm -hmm. like catty corner across the corner. Mm -hmm. Now they had the ladder set up right in front of the table, but they both go up. And they are, it's like a little platform for them. And there's already been two tables set up next to each other, perfectly uh, diagonal to the corner. Please don't die. And that literally is the chant that comes across the whole Scotiabank arena. Please don't die. Please don't die. If they would have hit for that ladder, that would have been the most disastrous finish in NXT TakeOver history. Glad it worked out what it was going to be. It was... To me, one of the more beautiful finishes that we've had to the final match and the final moments of NXT because of that crowd chant. And I wasn't sure if this was going to be the finishing spot. Me either. It's hard to predict the finishing spot but these days. Both yeah. of these guys went through what was supposed to be both tables to make it you know, less of an impact on them. They both went into the far table, hit the mat, and somehow... Adam Cole throws an arm over Johnny Gargano, or maybe that's how, the way they landed. Uh, no, no, he, he no. actually threw it. He threw it on, or he dripped it at the last second. They're that would have been hot if they landed and his arms was on top of him on the land. That yeah. would have been. Oh, that they're both been. lifeless, and neither Adam Cole nor Johnny Gargano would have kicked out of a three count at this point. Just no. so happens, Cole got the three count. Yeah, and well, retains the title. Well, right before that, um, we had. Gargano actually get this bag off of the off the cage. It was not tax. We thought it was going to be thumbtacks. I honestly thought it was going to be oh thumbtacks. Oh yeah. But yes. it was like the bag of nuts and wire cutters. And Johnny Gargano didn't understand the wire cutters until we initially he saw the barbed wire, and that kind of signifies doom. Because at that point, when he's up there with the coal, is when he's trying to put the barbed wire against his head, and that's when Cole just kind of panicked. Somebody, go do a still shot of Gargano. I know when I looked up at the Tron, I don't know how it came across on the network. He was, like, up on the top snipping that for a few seconds, looking like a little, like, construction worker. Yeah. It, I, I want a shot of that. So if, yeah. you, if you can get it, send it to me on Twitter, at no DQ. Yeah, I mean, human hands are not supposed to come in contact with... Unprotected hands, not supposed to come in contact with barbed wire. I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? It was a and funny then, image, though. I like it. It was yeah, that Cole was saw great. the barbed wire in Gargano's hand and was like, I gotta get the hell out of here. It's oh, probably, wait, there's no escape. It's probably protected. Like, it's probably, they probably round off the ends of the bar. Not to an extent, you got it. You know, so it's gimmick. Because, because blood and guts, they, they don't do yeah. that anymore. We don't do blood and guts anymore. They, they graduated. We, graduated they graduated graduated we are PG. We don't even blade anymore, people. No. So, by the magic of gaining the pin fall Adam Cole he is down for a little bit but eventually he gets up he takes the title and he leaves Gargano is down for fucking ever to the point to where Candice LeRae comes out to check on him and she helps him up and my first thoughts here are if they were a couple with one of those couple names like Brangelina or whatever uh. would they be uh jaundice just <laughs> and that could be their gimmick, and they could be <laughs> paint their body yellow. Okay, you, congratulations! You just created a mixed match challenge season four, first team. John. But yeah, nonetheless, overall the show a lot of energy, like every NXT Takeover always has. Well, to me, the aftermatch of this seemed like a farewell to Johnny Gargano. It really did. But that would be like the third or fourth one we've seen. So I'm not really sure if he's going anywhere, but it did seem like a farewell to him. No chance either. Say it is. Noah, what do you think he should do next? Or uh, they should make him do? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll just give our quick opinion. 
That's hard. If it, if it is, if he's graduating from NXT, what should he do? Well, if he's truly graduating from NXT, even though he says he is NXT, they already tried something with Raw of him in the tag titles. I have to say at this point, uh, you know, you talk about star power, you talk about bringing momentum, you talk about notability. Johnny Gargano would bring that, but again, they don't allow superstars like Drew Gulak to be main eventers and break past that scene or reach the brass ring. So, I'm sorry, he's too good for 205 Live in my Ooh, opinion. Johnny is? Yes, he is. But don't you want 205 Live to have that? I, I do, but uh, I don't want to restrain. That's the that, problem. That's why I asked you. I know, and I thank you for you that. Guys? What 205, I agree, what 205 Live needs is stars that have been built on the main roster to come in and yes. make it seem like a main roster program. Okay. Not stars that have been built on NXT or NXT UK, which are network exclusive programs that you're just going to bring in and it's 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 only going to level out the brand. It's not going to build it up any. You could build up Johnny Gargano in the brand, but as Noah said, anybody that's getting built in the brand of 205 Live hits a glass ceiling. Until so they merge 205 so, Live and have the Cruiserweight title along on NXT product, and if that happens on FS1, I'll be excited for that. It's just not going to change. There would be no improvement. If you so, want one person to move to 205 Live to help elevate the brand and possibly build an audience, it would be Daniel Bryan. I like that. Damn right. And you know who else I like once he loses the WWE Championship and he loses about seven or eight pounds? Kofi, Kofi Kingston. Yes! Cut. Established people. I might feel that 205 Live could be more of that WCW Cruiserweight time. Yes! And we said that on, I said that on the debate with Chris I Hayes. watched that, I know yes. I mentioned Gargano too because he was the first thing that came to Stars mind. and stories. You literally, you two put it in, in three words. I know we're going off topic here, but you know what? 205 Live matters. Stars and stories. Or well, the point Johnny is, Gargano was you going. send yeah. Johnny Gargano to Raw or SmackDown, you build him up for a couple of years, and if you still want to send him to 205 Live, you do him after, you give him some momentum, you give him some championships, yep. be attacked team, be it mid-card, be it the WWE or Universal Championship, because he's one of those guys like Daniel Bryan that's believable as the underdog that just somehow can do it. See, I feel like they would just put him in the mid-card tile picture to begin with. Jerry, what about you? You think Gargano should be going against the AJ Styles of the world? I think he's ready. I think he, like, he's um, been ready. I had he's been ready. I was thinking. Gr yeah. gran granted, he shouldn't dress as Marvel characters anymore, <laughs> because like, I he love lost that, his though. Punisher. He lost his Iron Man, and tonight he lost his Wolverine. Wow! If, when, when you lo when you lose, if you have an adamant skeleton, it's time to kind of move up or or just move <laughs> yeah. out, you know. But the like the end of the match, I'm pretty sure it went off the air and everything. That's where everybody was sitting, sitting, screaming, "Thank you, Johnny!" Mm -hmm. And I actually had chills because like, and I visibly showed Noah goosebumps because yeah, one. Did. I went five for five on my predictions. My and to, he was and, also sitting next to me the whole time, so that's why. Oh he had yeah, yeah, this was a thrill too. No, so just kidding. It, yeah, it, it, this guy's awesome. Yeah, Virtue's <laughs> great. Um, but there's also just this moment where you just saw jo Johnny Gargano soak it in. It does feel like it's the end of Johnny Gargano. Absolutely. Running. Like basically, that's the thing I was thinking. It's like, okay, if it's gonna be a steel cage match. Make it a steel cage, loser leaves an um, NXT match as well. Mm -hmm. It, was, it but, was just unspoken. Yeah, and, and, that, and that'd be fantastic. I could see Gargano being like, okay, like because he, he was already on his way up anyway, and then Ciampa ended up getting injured, yes. so yeah. it was kind of yeah. a quick fix. Yeah. It yeah. really was. Does anyone know Ciampa's status? Is he still out indefinitely? Uh, yeah, but he's recovering uh, very well, according to what I've seen on uh, WWE PC. And, uh, I think we Instagram. heard that he's cleared for like acting, but nothing that would be Not like physical in-ring uh, contact. And Probably wouldn't this. be allowed to get in a ring. Yeah. Even as a ref. I mean, that takeover target kind of was like Johnny Gargano's thank you for all you've done to NXT Swan Song. You saw how he interacted with the current up-and-coming NXT talent, not to mention current main eventers, main card stars on the main roster products, including but not limited to Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. Yeah. He's got to be, got to be main roster bound. I just pray the best for him under Vince McMahon's watchful eye. Well, I guess we got to stay tuned. Definitely. Yeah. See what happens. Support, no DQ. So that brings us to the end of the main event. And uh, here on the NX team, we like to rate the main event using the General's five-star rating system. And uh, Virtue, 
you're our new guest on the show. Out of five stars, where do you rate just the main event? Okay. Um, it was really good. Yeah. Right? And these two guys have had a big history. A lot of highlights going into their matches over the last several Shit, months. a lot of highlights in this match. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to give it... I'll give it four and a quarter because I had to lower a little bit because I still like the triple threat better. But I'm interested to see what you guys are going to give it. No, I, I, I seem to be very critical on four and a quarter, but oh. still a good score. What do you give it, Noah? This was my first live takeover experience. I loved it from top to bottom, even the cooler. But looking at just the main event, it started off slow, maybe in traditional wrestling, and I've seen that, of course from uh, NXT TakeOver uh, New York. And then 25, they brought out the Street Fighter uh, gimmick per se that kind of played off what happened there. And it played out kind of how I feel like it was going to for each man, except I feel like the exchange between the wrestling and the Street Fight was pretty interesting. But then the way they handled the cage match and the finish and just the swan song, and it was a collusion to a story. No doubt in my mind, Jar Gargano is main event bound. I'm a little sad Undisputed Era is not all draped in gold, or even came out to ringside, but then again, it also shows how credible you can take Adam Cole as a champion. Not only does he have charisma, he backs it up in the ring by himself. So with that being said, just main event-wise, I'm going four and a half. He beats me, okay. Jerry? All right. I actually really enjoyed the initial wrestling match as well. Like, I thought that was actually, like, a lot of people were, kind of, like, you know, kind of down on it a little bit. But at the same time, I was thinking, it's like, okay. And then even in a couple spots, he actually channeled Champa. Yes. Because, like, there's this one part where you're sitting on the apron. And that was my favorite when start the little Champa thing, where Champa just oh, kind of does, does his applause or pats himself on the back. This, this wrestling match was not about counters and kicks. Yeah. And, um... The, the fact that we saw Gargano just purposely cause his qualification just so he can get to the street fight and beat the hell out of Cole, mm -hmm. I dug that. I didn't see that coming. And then, the, like, it's such a definitive finish to the feud. Like, basically, there's really nowhere else for this, for this feud to go anymore. Most feuds back in the 80s and 90s during the Attitude Era and everything, you need something like this. You need a steel cage. You mean, even WCW, they had the three-level cage at one I point. Remember that. To, that was ridiculous, but to, I remember. Ready to but, rumble. <laughs> I, I, I loved was, it. I was, I, when I, I saw it. the cage being lowered, I saw all the weapons on it. I was, I was looking for like uh, a, I was looking for a lid on it too. It made it almost like a hell of a cell. Well, you don't down. need a lid when you when you surround it in barbed wire. Yeah, but even then, like. I saw broom handles. I saw everything. You know, fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Yes, we had a fire extinguisher spot. We saw a Panama sunrise out of Johnny Gargano and two out of Adam Cole. Back so to back. One off the ladder. Yes. Yes. And that, th those were fantastic. Not of Petey Williams quality. No. <laughs> no. You know the originator. I respect him. Impact Wrestling. But for, for me, yeah, it was a great match. I'm still going to go ahead and give it four and a quarter. It wasn't the okay. perfect main event, mm -hmm. but I think it was for what it was and what it needed to be, it was beautiful. And keep in mind, we saw this live, which I got to be honest with you, that was the reason I gave it an extra quarter. Yeah. This was my first live NXT experience ever. Same here. And I cannot wait for my next one. Was that an extra Canadian quarter or a U.S. quarter? Well, since we're in Toronto, I have to honor Canada, so okay. it was Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in hindsight, the first two things that come to mind for me about this match was, one, the uh, the cage match part of it was fucking awesome. Yes. Be awesome. Um, <laughs> Do my <eyes. laughs> The second thing is, this match was really, really, really long. Yeah. It was almost an hour. I probably, probably went until 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's now, probably an hour. About overall, it. this match was great. So I know I'm going to start at four stars. And now the story. I feel like... The first match could have been a hell of a lot shorter. Yeah, that went on for quite if a while. If you are yeah. only going to finish the first fall with a disqualification like they did, you could have told that story seven or eight minutes prior to when they did and had a shorter match overall and saved their bodies a little bit. Yeah. They could have got a lot more done than themselves if that were the case. There were multiple times during this match where both men were kind of uh, yeah. resting. I would say that part of it is three stars. 
the uh, the street fight. or three star worthy. Okay. I think the street fight was four star worthy. It wasn't the best street fight I've seen. It definitely wasn't uh, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. No, not even no. close. Hey, a fan did get a selfie though, and the souvenir cut was used. But uh, they kept it entertaining, <laughs> and they got it back to the ring. And I would say that's four star worthy. The the third fall in that awesome cage <laughs> is definitely five star worthy. So I'm gonna bring it down, and I'm gonna call it four and a quarter. I'm gonna agree with you guys. Right? Oh okay, yeah, four and a quarter, or all the way across the board. Again, I ironed it more because it was live, and and oh, like Noah, Vir- Noah bumped it up. Yeah, yeah and like Virtue, like you said, this was way better than what they did with the Ambrose Asylum. Yeah. Isn't that funny that Jericho and Ambrose in a similar type match kind of was flat, but yet this... But this wasn't a match. This was just the third fall. Maybe that's why. Maybe. And to answer a question from earlier, honestly, I think I would also give the second match, the uh, Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae match, I think I'd give that four and a quarter, too. Oh, without a doubt. That's, uh, that, that, there's no argument there. The, the, there's really... Yeah. There's so I may not outscore it from the main event, but I think it was just every bit as good as the main event well, in its own way. Yeah. Well, well, husband husband and wife prevailed. Point, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, get ready well, for that Well, these are the guy. general's five-star scores, yeah. so... And these scores matter. No affiliation to Dave Meltz or any of his crew. No EQ approved. Who? Yeah. So, that brings us to the, the end of this episode of, what is it, the Rated R Review? Re- something, recap, like that. Yeah, recap. something like that. Yeah. Triple R something. So as our brand new guest, Virtue, uh, where can we find you on social media? So Twitter, at NoDQ underscore Virtue, and you'll see why I got this shirt called the Troll Slayer. Yes. And that's where you want to go, and I post everything else there so you can see all the other stuff I do, too. <laughs> yeah. That's it. What about you, Noah? Yes. Here's the spot we all uh, look for. Uh, all right, all right. Let me get my voice together, because my voice is still recovering. Gentlemen, it was an absolute honor and privilege doing this now with you and seeing Tigor live with y'all. Absolutely. Can't wait for some of tomorrow to do it all over again. If y'all want to know about more about me, bleh, know this. I'm just a simple man. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a lifelong fan of wrestling. wrestling. Thank you, Jerry. If you want to follow me, have more Twitter followers than I do. <laughs> I'm not about numbers. He's a popular guy. I'm about the community. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> that's know his guy. personality. That's, that's, this, yeah. this guy is. Honestly, I didn't think I was. I didn't, I didn't think. I, I didn't think I was like that. But okay, I'm just me. Anyway, if you want to follow me, though, like I said, look me up on Twitter, nodq.com forward slash Noah. Uh, Take you to my Twitter page, or follow my simple YouTube channel here at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Noah Foster two ten. You'll find all sorts of reviews, summaries. Indie views on all things wrestling, WM Beyond, including at the heart of it, my series on Cruiserweight Wrestling, then now forever, and reviewing the Tool of Life brand, hashtag Tool of Five Life Matters, in collab with NoDQ. And I'm pretty sure these guys can plug the NoDQ store, but ah, hell, I'll do it. Support NoDQ. They're the reason I'm in YouTube and why we're all here. Buy a shirt. Buy this shirt. Buy this shirt. Go, buy this if you're a fan of Speed Air. But buy our NoDQ shirt first. NoDQ.com forward slash shirts. There's a ton of new shirt designs. I actually have a shirt now. I find that funny. <laughs> Uh, go follow uh, NoDQ and I social media platforms there's a comment section on everything on the official side and your comments matter make a friend make an enemy attempt to troll virtue good luck on that <laughs> uh, there's polls memes columns gifts rematch it's actually frame out picks you name it it's there it's wrestling primarily WWE with a little bit of expanding to uh, indie scene so stay tuned for more stuff also especially on uh, AEW and as always, I'd like to close. Support your wrestling outlets for big and small. And let's keep growing this incredible wrestling community together. Simple as that. See you all tomorrow at the meetup and SummerSlam. Well, thank you for joining us again, Noah, and this time live. Awesome. And thank you to the newest member of the NXT team, Virtue. Virtue. And hey. if you would like <laughs> to join the NXT team and help us review a future episode of NXT UK on the NXT party, Join us for a predictions or a review episode or a rated R report, any of the above. Uh, you can find me on nodq.com forward slash Stefan. That's S T E F A N. That'll take you to my Twitter page. Or if you just want to look me up on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O S B O R N E. As always, the R stands for restricted. You can also find the gentleman on Twitter. The gentleman the gentleman That's champion right. for now gen- until tomorrow night for until tomorrow night but this is my night people damn it it took me 12 hours to get here <laughs> but I'm finally fucking right <laughs> <laughs>
congratulations. <laughs> this is your moment. You're a shopper. Yes. <laughs> he cried. He cried. But, but you find me on Twitter, hat, hashtag, uh, or, or at, no, yeah, at no DQ Gerald, and also my Facebook group, Arbar, all capital, A-R-M-B-A-R, exclamation point. point. Don't forget that. Uh, join us there, memes, discussions, just all around good time. Yeah, that's where you add us on Facebook. Do not add us as friends. We will not add you. Just saying. Sp Facebook is spoiler free. You can also find me on Instagram at Osborne.Stefan. And if you'd like this video, click the like button that's underneath me and Virtue. If you like all of our videos, please click the subscribe button over there underneath Jerry. <laughs> if you're subscribed on NoDQ, do yourself a favor, click the bell icon. Because when we hit 100 subscribers on Aftermatch Wrestling, we're going to start doing What's NXT? That's our NXT review show live every week, Thursday morning, around 7 o'clock a.m. Come have breakfast with us and help us. French uh, toast. Help My us favorite. review NXT by asking us questions that we can answer at the end of the video. So you can find us there at A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H, all one word, Aftermatch Wrestling. Wrestling. And we are at like 97 subscribers. So we're almost there, folks. Do it. <laughs> so we're going to start doing What's NXT Live on NoDQ.com's YouTube page. When we hit 1,000, we're going to start doing everything live. Because then we can do it on our page. And if you are subscribed to Aftermatch Wrestling, please do us a favor and click the share button. Share us on Facebook. Share us on Twitter. If your friends like wrestling, maybe they'll like hearing us bullshit about wrestling. Bathroom twice stalls. A week. Anything. Just get our word out there. Man, so, reading newspaper. <laughs> So, thank you for joining us for the simple man Noah Foster, for Virtue, for the General Jerry Slaughter. I am the Wizard of NoDQ, Stefan Osborne, and we will see you in NXT time. Yes! Have a good night, folks! Champ.